point of introduction, uh, of course, we all know that global changes is changing in the, in the regions to these center regions, increasing the impact of water extraction and regulation. So, some of our rivers, meaning from, from, from permanent to temporary rivers that we're suffering now in Spain, so it's crucial to set some environmental flows to stop this deterioration. And I think the consideration of the meteorology and the meteorology and the basic scales fundamental to apply a holistic view of environmental flows, as I will try to explain here, to overcome the actual focus on minimum flows along the list. So the background I can tell you is that regionally or in Spain, all the river segments has an environmental flow assessment. Little is established, is in the water board uh, management plan, and uh, the river classification was already done in the European countries, as we already know, but deficient in morphology, or maybe very deficient in morphology. Of course, classification, that's fine. So we have a long way done, but what to do? Because uh, I felt that uh, in Spain we've been moving in the last 20 years from having 10% of minimum flow, 20 years of work of habitat modeling, habitat suitability, everything, and now many rivers, now they have 2% of the minimum flow as a minimum, 3%, 5%. Because the water managers are so efficient, they can reduce and reduce the minimum flow with more and more studies. <laughs> uh, so that's the reality today. I was asking, that's what my question to Mike. So, from a holistic perspective, it's fundamental to establish a conceptual scheme of eco-hydrological relationships uh, to complement the habitat-based approach. I think it's fundamental because some of the, these questions we have to address now in Europe need an eco-hydrological large approach to go from the large thing, from the ecology to the flows, and now looking at the small scale or the habitat modeling itself alone. What some of our river managers really love it because it's the best uh, way to hire the companies, the consultancies. <laughs> so it's important to develop these empirical flow ecology relationships to try finding these limits of ecological eco alteration. Then, going to my, well, our um, goal was to develop these empirical flow ecology relationships for these reasons I have explained. So trying kind of this kind of simple heterological variables so can be interpretable and logical, from the ecological perspective, and we can communicate to water managers. The kind of basic steps we followed was, first of all, setting our hypothesis of ecological responses together with our ecological conceptual scheme, making a scheme first, as in, the, in some of the in BDM and other uh, holistic methods, is done first, then in that frame, you can develop biological significant periods, or whatever you want, and then, of course, we needed to match series of hydrological data with biological data. A bit struggling in some parts to develop our database and then try to model this discussion. Right. So, this is an example. This is so simple ecological scheme that we develop sometimes, sometimes with stakeholders, painting, in, doing a meeting, my yeah. uh, painting, doing the traps like this. This is the one we were using for side periods. I won't use, I won't show any of the others. So, very simple our hibernation, our migration, spawn period, incubation, and prior emergence and the development of juveniles. So, this was our first scheme to select our hydrological variables from a list of 80 or 85 hydrological variables that you call. So that's the ecological <coughs> scheme we need to work. There's another for some months and so on. <coughs> the actual situation in Spain is this. This is the actual flow. This is the actual flow, total inversion of the flow regime. So, as in California, I suppose, we live from orchards, oranges, clementines, all this. So, we have this significant period with this you know, great reduction in flows here, great increase in summer. So so without the hydrology, we can't do anything. We can't convince managers to go further <coughs> so far, I think. So study area, the Hooker River Basin, it was a pilot, a pilot basin for the water framework directive. So we have the data. Some of these points are <coughs> not here. Up here, we have 45 years of records of daily data. Some of them have 20, 15, 40 years data. 
So the river could come a bit of Julia, we have a bit of and climbing with a lot of natural variability, drama all the time. Strongly regulated below these large dams. One, 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 two, three, four. Remember, Spain has more than 1,200 large dams, plus another 50,000 dams. High, we have a high intensity of fish species. This is not Greece, but it's very diverse. So we have this dominant family, cyprinids, eight species. In total, we have 12 in the river basin. These are the points we could use for this. So we have split the analysis in two parts. Analysis, of course, we have to consider the biogeographical setting. So salmonids and rest of fish and allotronomes, three types in this area. And analysis for cyprinids in the final zone, or the zone below. Cyprinids, others, and allotronomes also in the rest of the basin. Okay? So different analysis, separated. But here, our data. Um, hydrological data collected for, in that case, for five years to get. This, these five years to relate exactly with the fish and invertebrate collection data we did in approximately 2009. 80 hydrological variables were reduced, of course, we selected 25. I don't want to go into this, no time. And the ecological data, with the biological data, finally, we got 116 points of fish and invertebrate sampling from our studies plus administration. And with this five years, we made like a snapshot, okay? So a database of like, as if it was one day, one year of sampling, one year of hydrology, but hydrology is considered in past years, of course, to calculate the, the hydrological variables. So we have these variables <coughs> to evaluate ecological responses for fish densities and monids, on this, uh, cypermids, others, and aloctonos. These fish community indices, greatness and weaker, <laughs> for macros, uh, water quality, average uh, uh, score per taxa, number of families. Then, list of one of these were selected, you know, mean monthly flow, mean all the maximum flow, the mean of the minimum flow, the volume of variation, relations, sorry, talking about variability, range, variation, uh, variation in mean monthly flows. Oh, I'm really not interested. For modeling, we could have chosen several things. We used this time GAMS, but we've been using GAMS in other works, and we wanted some GAMS to consider some specific profiles, so shape constraint GAMS, because we tested eight shape constraints. So it can be any GAM with any number of splines, no? But we want only eight types of this, considering only monotonous. Monotonicity, concavity, or convexity, so it's fixed. If it's not that, if it's a gap like this, no sense, we can waste the time with that. <laughs> Predictive power with the Akaike, partial dependence plots, and then in the plots you will see the dots with orientative percentiles plus percentile 5%, percentile 95%. So we consider what's to the left and to the right. It's kind of out of our range of natural variability. It's not really, not exactly, but from here to left, from here to right, is across out of nature, or it's kind of out. Then, results. Mm -hmm. uh, general patterns of the GAMS indicated the deviations from the natural flow regime can degrade the fish communities, of course, especially in the range I told you, the farther left, farther right. The same for native allotonomes. In this case, for allotonomes, is invasive fish, foreign and translocated species. So some cyprinids of Spain are translocated here. So we're pulled in allotonomes that uh, change the vision of lot uh, lot analysis. Now we'll go to the plots, but here is a brief summary. The density of allotonom species negatively affected by the reduction of mean monthly flow in December, for some reason. This is the only one of the months where we found our relationship. So first simple thing you already know is that some of the relationships are robust, some others are not, are nothing, flat or nothing. Fish community channel weaver was negatively related by the positive alteration of August, 
And of course, if we inverse the flow and we multiply the flow by two or three in August, in the low flow when Spain is totally dry in the summer, then you deteriorate the community. And about the richness, the mean, the mean of the maximum flow in November is affecting the total fish, fish rate. <laughs> I'm going to density if I can on the seasons of time. <coughs> then, for some moments, I, uh, I will show the two plots where we found robust models. So, the coefficient of variation. Some months coefficient of variation in November. That means that's really good news for us. So, in November, in the start of the spawning season of the brown trout, is really affecting this, the coefficient of variation. That means if we increase a lot the variation of the flow in November, less instability, less instability in the flow in November is bad for the spawning, bad for the uh, for the yeah, for the reds. Okay? So it's kind of reasonably or mechanistically related with the spawning season, with the incubation and the reproduction success. It's clear how this is affecting the salmon density. Secondly, not that robust, but I want to show uh, the mean monthly flow in March was related also with salmon density. So here it's not that clear, but this is the negative alteration to this. So low, too low flows in March, of course, deteriorate the fry survival for brown trout, which I suppose is totally reasonable for you. If you live in Europe, and in this season, is an emergence, survival time. So this very low flow in March, but where they should be the highest, of course, is not. Second, for say, three minutes, the coefficient of variation of January was the one uh, fitting best. So in January, for the security is important, because that's the, usually the natural highest monthly flow in Mediterranean perennial rivers. If you see some of the papers from Del Mar et al, for example, where we were classifying rivers in southeast Spain, you see that's the highest flow. So if you reduce that flow in January, the renewal of the riverbed substrate, the removal of a lot of algae that is covering all our rivers now in summer in Spain, that's going to affect the reproduction success. So it's reasonable that. For well, the mean monthly flow in June is not that clear, it's monotonous curve, but it's telling that as you increase this mean monthly flow in June in the summer, and it's too high, the cyprinus density is going to increase. And you have more flow and more, velo more velocity, the fry fish are not going to be happy, of course. They don't have the ability to swim in very high environments like this where the flow is 100% altered, so it's multiplied by two. <coughs> in two. That's bad. But it depends on the species. Some of them were, will be emerging in, in May, June, July. Finally, for macroinvertebrates, we found that the mean, mean flow in October, so the very low flows in October, are important to see how, to the left, the negative, so the reduction of this minimum flows in October is influencing uh, invertebrates, the number of families in this case, because we find this reasonable because there's a reduction of wet area. So there is a reduction of habitat area, habitat diversity of different patches of plants, aquatic plants and riparian plants. So as a consequence, we find reasonable. We have this negative effect of lower minimum, lower flows in October. And the same happens for the Iberian Monitoring Working Party in the Central. Here we have another relationship for November. Here you see this one, this uh, GANS field. Well, you find this extremes. And going to the end for fish biodiversity, the only curve where we really found what looks like a threshold among the combination of so many biological variables and 25 biological variables, the only one that showed some kind of drop in the curve for the diversity and river index for the fish. So let's say we have hope we could tell the managers, okay, if you go further from 90% of alteration August, you're going too high <coughs> to destroy our communities. Okay? Going too high is bad for our side which are the dominant communities below downs. 
Talk of visions. Where relevant trends were found, where it happens, the deviation from the natural regime are going to be published. The communities, the results highlight the importance of maintaining the natural character of these Mediterranean fluvial systems. If we sustain this kind of inverted regime, it's going to be worse. Now it's bad, it's going to be worse. We have a lot of increases in many regions. The alterations in flow variability in the winter affect both South North and South Greenwich. And the hydro ecohydrological information is fundamental as a frame for environmental flow studies as a basis for the hypothesis and cost effective reasoning, all, of course, based on the river habitat and template. Further things, further studies, we are analyzing now for the last months, we were analyzing data gathered in four months period, biological significant periods in four months. Uh, there's going to be more robust. We need to complete a better ecohydrological scheme, especially for macroinvertebrate families. We need more income from macroinvertebrate experts. And we were going to separate some of the translocated species. Okay? Thank you very much.